Hi there, I'm Jim Catto, I'm a urologist from Sheffield in the UK and uh, I'm also Editor-in-Chief of European Urology. So uh, I just presented IROC, which is a randomised trial of robotic versus open cystectomy. Uh, we uh, took 340 patients, we randomised them to both approaches, uh, 317 had their bladder removal. Uh, we knew that the difference was going to be about quality of recovery, so we knew that in the long term survival will be the same, we knew that the complications generally should be the same, and we thought that the difference would be in those first 90 days. So we had a lot of, we had 20 different outcomes, uh, and our primary outcome was about the length of stay combined with readmission, so what we call 90 days alive out of hospital. And then our secondary outcomes were things like mobility, we gave people an exercise tracker to look at their exercise levels, stamina and strength of exercises, disability, quality of life, and measures like that. After all of that, what we found is that there was a two-day difference in length of stay and readmission between the two arms. And so, um, people having robotic surgery, intracorporeal radical cystectomy, uh, spent on average 2.2 days less in hospital in the first 90 days compared to open operations. Um, but by, and then all the secondary outcomes tended to favor robotics. So, less disability, improved quality of life, different complications, fewer complications, but those differences disappeared by about three months. So there was a difference in quality of recovery, uh, but it's at the cost of robotics, so slightly longer operation, probably more expensive, uh, and uh, uh, differences in ability of surgeons to be able to get hold of that. The, the length of stay is proportional to your healthcare design. So um, in the US it is shorter, but I, uh, and I know on Twitter people were saying four or five days, that isn't really what the evidence shows. So there was a US study called Razor, which was a similar study, and they had a median length of six days. So I don't think it is that different. Um, but fundamentally, to get someone home quicker, that means they're fitter, they're weller. So length of stay is good because it measures the ability to walk out the door, but it also reflects a whole bunch of how well you're feeling, how, how good your pain control is, are you eating and drinking. So if you're getting people home quicker, they are better, they're fitter, they're weller. Uh, even if you can only measure it by looking at length of stay. So is 90 days long enough? It probably should be long enough for most people. So we, I mean, we have collected up to a year, but you know, when you design a study, you have to have a primary outcome, which you have to design the whole powering and the balance of the study around. 90 days was what we knew the outcomes, and, and, and in cystectomy, 99% of the complications happen in the first 90 days. So, so if you've got to 90 days without a problem, you'll be fine. But um, there are people who've had complications that last longer than 90 days, but they will have occurred in the first 90 days. So the, 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 real, the real thing that matters is, is it, an on, is it safe for the cancer? Is it oncologically safe? And, and that will take two years or so to show, and we are following them up now to see that. So uh, uh, you know, at a year, the outcomes were similar. Does it, does it maintain that, uh, or does it become different? If it became different, then you'd have to worry about the safety of that approach. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a good point. So, you know, this trial was done in the UK. The UK has a very centralised cancer service, so we all work in cancer centres. Uh, I only do bladder and prostate surgery, and we, we drain a population of about 2 million. And so, in the UK, we have a very centralised model, so all of our surgeons, uh, if you do cystectomy, you're doing a lot of them, and you're the only one doing it. Well, you might have a unit, <coughs> but your unit's the only one's doing it for quite a large population. If you go to the US, there's a lot of units where someone does one a year, and, and so they will have a completely different performance of the operation. I mean, I feel it's, it's a big operation, it's done in people who are not very fit, it should be done by people who do a lot of it and are expert in it. Uh, but you're right, this, this is a UK study, so you're looking at very competent surgeons in both arms. So, so do I think the volume affects the outcome? No. I think uh, we know it's high volume surgery. We know, we know the surgeons have done a lot of these procedures. We, we actually, because the data in the UK is publicly available, we have 29 surgeons. You can go on a, a publicly facing database and look at all of their surgical outcomes over the last few years. So they're all doing a lot of, a lot of surgery. I don't think it contributes to the differences. The, the differences are because one of the approaches has smaller incisions, less blood loss, and is probably less painful. And so people recover better afterwards. Uh, I think that accounts for the differences.